Cleaning the Lyman Flintlock Deer Stalker, William Hovey Smith, 2015. I'm the author of Shooting and Maintaining Your Muzzleloader, and here is how to clean the deer stalker carbine as well as shoot it most effectively. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and today I want to take you through the cleaning of the Lyman Deer Stalker Flintlock rifle. I shot it three days ago and I cleaned it using alcohol and with this I wiped out the barrel. I removed the vent plug here and cleaned it and I have not cleaned the lock yet and it's starting to show a little rust as one would expect and here is the flint which is dirty and also the lock parts okay how did we do again a little black a little black powder residue carbon mostly is still there but I don't see any rust okay so the alcohol as an expedient to get you by in the field for a couple of days will work, but it's not as thorough as it really needs to be for long-term storage. For that, you need to do what we're going to do right now and actually clean it in soapy water. And what I've got back here is ordinary Dawn dishwashing detergent in a tub of water in my sink. And so we're going to use that. What I want to show you is how I fitted out this gun to get maximum accuracy and reliability out of it. First off, uh, the barrel of this gun is pretty good. So I haven't done anything so far as modifying the barrel at all. This is the original ramrod, which is nylon with a steel and brass tip. And I'm going to replace it with this one which has brass fittings on both ends. It's also nylon, but significantly, it allows an extension to be put on. Screws on just like this. So, you have an easy way to grasp the end of the ramrod and give the gun barrel a good cleaning, which we are going to do anyway. Now, so far as the lock goes, we're going to dump this whole thing in the sink and brush it off and oil it and lube it dry it on a stove eye on to get it so it's hot to the touch and then lubricate it with boar butter similarly the smaller lock parts and reassemble this is the adjustable rear sight of this rifle this sight has a specially designed base that fits only this and similar guns. Now, Lyman also sells a Plains rifle, and this sight will also fit it. Now, because this is a very specialized sight, uh, if you want one, buddy, you better get it because don't expect that this site to be in catalog forever. Uh, this rifle has been in production since 1990, but that does not mean that its sales have been all that great or that this site will be in the Lyman line forever. So if you've got one of these guns and have been sort of thinking about, well, maybe I'll put an adjustable sight on it, maybe not, go ahead and get that site now because you may not be able to find it in later years. Okay, I'm also, for hunting, going to be putting a sling on it. And this is a nice sling. This one happens to be made by CBA. Uh, we have some grease, some boar butter, some cloth, pajama material, and two different thicknesses of patching material. This is pillow ticking, and this is canvas from a drop cloth. Now, both of these have been washed. Uh, pillow ticking has sizing in it, a starch. So you want to wash that out first in a washing machine and then you can cut it and use it. Both of these are traditional patch materials 
and the pillow ticking I particularly like and that's what I'll cut and lubricate for use in this gun when I shoot round ball. But there is one thing I need to show you here. These are factory produced guns and they are machine inlaid. Consequently when they do they have some extra slop particularly back here in the breech. Right back down in here they give some looseness to the rear of the barrel. And so what I've done and what you should do is glass bed the back here and the tang as well as the foreign. So this will help improve your accuracy considerably as well as strengthen the rifle. Now this rifle incidentally in use has a small split right here. Okay? And so I put three pins right here on top of this split and glued it and pinned it down here to strengthen the stock. Uh, such repairs were commonly made in these old guns, so that's not uh, terribly unusual. The rest of the stock is sound. Oh, I've also uh, written some of my load information here on the inside. Uh, yeah, so uh, as I use these guns, sometimes decades between periods of use, I forget what the loads were. Okay, well, that tells me. So uh, that is what that's all about. So now we'll get back to the cleaning. We have our barrel immersed here. And it is the very back of the barrel that's the problem. Um, is not so much cleaning the front end. That goes pretty good. But what you want to do is to get a patch that's tight enough that you get a piston action, which I'll hopefully demonstrate here. This is doubled. Let me get it down good. Yeah. So this is all the way down in the bore. And you take it, lift, put it down so it doesn't go all over the place and you proceed to pull water up all the way through the bore. You saw what force we had on it. All right. I'll turn it over and do exactly the same thing again. And now we're going to take a patch that's clean. If the gun hadn't been sort of clean before, I might in fact even do another step. Just one more clean patch will do, I believe. Running just some clean water through the bore now. Stopping up the bore with the other side just to rinse the soap out. This piece of toweling here. Wipe the exterior. You see our little piece of torn off towel down there and I'm going to take a piece of paper toweling as you see right here and put in this vent hole which will serve as a wick to trap moisture that I can't otherwise reach. You see this barrel has a subchamber in it. A little smaller diameter chamber at the very rear. So we want to make sure that we try to get all of the water out of it too. And so that's the first patch and of course it came out down. Okay. So here's the second one. I'm feeling more resistance now. Uh-oh. Pull the patch off. What do you do? This is a worm. 
it is a screw and we've gone to the other ramrod which has threads on both ends of it so you can attach other accessory items and that's why I'm going to use this ramrod here to actually hunt with when I get into the field and you take it and you twist it around and hopefully you will ultimately capture your patch material and be able to bring it out of the bore thusly. What? Works! Yeah, you're going to need one of these too. Forgot about it the first time, but yeah, sooner or later you are going to stick a patch in a bore. Alright, we're starting to get it dry. Still a little mostly actually old lubricant coming out because I did lubricate it before. I'm going to use a patch with a little alcohol. This is not necessary, but it will help a little bit because I don't have a heater going. It's 100 degrees out there right now. So my drying method is going to be stick this gun out in sunlight and let the barrel heat up to the point of view that it drives off any moisture at all. We have heated and retrieved our lock parts. So now they are dry. As a matter of fact, you do get even a little odor of hot metal from them. So what we're going to do at this stage is to take some bore butter and we're going to apply bore butter to the metal while it is still warm. You see how it melts? very very quickly and easily this seeps into the pores of the metal and actually helps to protect it even much better than it would be if you applied it after it was cold as you can see a little goes a long way same with the tang here. We now have our sun-baked barrel here which is quite warm to the touch. This is the vent screw with a vent hole and in previous videos I mentioned enlarging it and a 1 16th inch bit is what one would use here and that seems to work pretty well. Washed it, brushed it and cleaned it on the outside and inside as well. And I'm going to use some high pressure grease here. And ordinary bore butter doesn't have the strength characteristic that you need for this. And this is one thing you want to make sure that you actually pull with every cleaning. Otherwise it will stick so firmly you're not able to retrieve it. And it screws in right here. Goes in easily. Okay. And it's screwed down flat. Uh, don't tighten it within an inch of its life. Just screw to fit. And eh, a little bit. Uh, don't really lean on it. That's all that will need to hold it. Okay, so that's done. So now, you can start on the barrel. And although I would usually hold the barrel up, we're going to try to do it horizontal here. And start putting some lubrication on the inside of the barrel. Bring the bore butter again. The reason I do not use oil at this stage is oil... Uh, doesn't do as well with black powder. It will spoil black powder. Bore butter will too if you make it real sloppy. But it is better. It also somewhat seasons the bore with use. Actually, either end of this ramrod will work, by the way. Okay, we're going to 
double the patch. A little tighter fit. The idea is you want to get a uniform coating all through the little lines and grooves there. Okay. You know the gun is clean, and you can just use the same patch, put a coating on the outside. Also notice that this is just a little bit bent on the inside. That is to give a tighter fit to the barrel wedge. This is another little custom modification that you can do if you think your barrel is fitting a little bit loosely. Particularly for a gun that has only one wedge like this one does. It's vital that that one actually bears and does you some real good. You don't want it super, super tight, but you do want it to bear. All of this is sort of a balancing act. Make sure all your screws and fittings are tight. And they are. Okay. And this is, of course, where your front barrel swivel is uh, for the attachment of the sling. Okay, so barrel is ready to go in the gun. But the gun is not ready for the barrel. Okay. So now we have gun stock. We need to attach the tank. On many muzzle loaders, there's a screw that all goes all the way from the tang down to tie into the trigger guard. Matter of fact, the majority of them. Uh, this gun does not. It uses two wood screws. Make sure everything is down and fitted, particularly since we've blast bedded this. I also, I also put a little lube on the screws themselves. You don't want to be super sloppy about it or you weaken the wood, but just enough to protect the threads and the heads. And this is a pretty robust stock for a muzzle loader too. Uh, it's pretty thick here in the wrist. So that gives this gun good strength. Now, we can drop the barrel in. Plump. And we need us a barrel wedge, which we have floating around here somewhere. There it is. Got enough lube on my fingers, just about. You notice it does tap in with just a little bit of pressure. Uh, if it just falls straight in, it's not binding. It needs to have some friction against it. Now the lock. You put it on half cock always when you install it. Make sure your sear is in the down position like this by pushing on the trigger. Okay. Drop it in. And it just drops in the work. This has a single lock plate screw. Some locks have two. This has only one. Screw in tight. Take back about a quarter turn. Make sure the lock functions. Yeah. Comes back and stands at full cock. All right. Now something's missing. Uh, like the jaw. OK. 
Okay, our leather, our flint. We're going to expose a fresh flint surface here. And we shoot this gun with the bevel up. Get it all the way back in here. Line it up so it hits the prison square. Tighten. Yep. Okay. So we have the rifle now assembled in functional and firing condition. And I need to also install the sights. Which we have here. And it has one metal screw and one wood screw. You saw the rough index of wood screw in the rear here. Get it started a little bit. Okay. Now the metal screw here is the critical one. Okay. Now I think we can see the wood screw. Tighten the metal screw now. Tighten the wood screw. Don't want to do this too tight because you will actually start stripping the wood if you do. I'm now ready to attach a sling and also our new ramrod. And now that we have a gun cleaned and ready and shot in, we're ready to go squirrel hunting. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Besides shooting and maintaining your muzzle loader, I also have other ebooks, such as Muzzle Loaders for Hunting and hunting big and small game with muzzleloading pistols, as well as extreme muzzleloading and also muzzleloading in backyard deer hunting. I have a new series of business books in the Profit series, the first of which is Ideas for New Businesses. And here's a little blurb about me and about the book. Now, I'm going to have future videos, squirrel hunting and hunting big game with this gun, and I'm going to sell it at the end of this hunting season. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 425 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.